Hello, Dave here again with Sparkfun Electronics. Today we're going to be talking about how to construct your very own big time watch kit. This is a very simple watch. It's got a little red circuit board in it with an Atmega 328 processor. It keeps decent time, but it's very, very stylish. So this is a kit that you can actually assemble yourself, and we're going to be using the Learn to Solder Big Time Kit, which comes with a soldering iron solder, the kit itself, and a couple of other tools to help us along the way. First, we've got safety glasses, and we have some nippy cutters, which are very handy when snipping leads. We have the actual soldering iron. We have the kit itself that contains all the components that we're going to be working with. We have some solder to go with the iron. We have some solder wick, which hopefully we won't need, but if we mess up, if we need to you know, go back a step, this will be very helpful in uh, getting some solder out. We have a solder base station here, a sponge to go in the station, and of course, the instructions. Now let's open the smaller box and see just the components for the big time watch kit itself. As you can see, we have a red circuit board. We have the watch band. We have some hardware to keep everything together. We have all the components that we'll be soldering onto the circuit board. We have the housing and step-by-step -step instructions that will walk us through the actual assembly process. Before we get started with the actual soldering, you've got to remember safety first. I'm going to put on my safety glasses just so no stray little pieces go flying into my eye because that would be a bummer. As you can see, I've already assembled my soldering iron holder just by screwing in the metal bit to the base. And now I'm going to add a little bit of water to the sponge underneath. We'll use this sponge to clean the soldering iron tip in between solders. The first component we're going to be soldering is a resistor. It's this little guy. If you hold it up with the gold band on your right, the color combination is brown, black, orange. So this is a 10K ohm resistor. To get it to fit into the board, I'm going to pick it up and I'm just going to bend the leads at 90 degree angles. That should let them fit right into this slot right here. It's kind of right where the arrow is pointing where it says watch the notch. Now if I turn it over, it has a tendency to fall out like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it in then bend the leads out just a little bit so it kind of holds it in place. Now that it's there, we're actually going to solder it in place. I'm going to take my soldering iron, I'm going to tin the tip just a little bit, then come in and apply the solder. Now our resistor is in place, but it's kind of a pain because these leads are sticking out. Those are just excess metal, we don't need them in the, the circuit. So what I'm going to do is take these cutters here, these flush cutters, snip off the excess right at the base. Now this is where the safety glasses come in handy because using these cutters can be kind of dangerous. When you snip it, the little metal bits have a tendency to go flying across the room, so make sure you're wearing safety goggles for this part. Next up are the two 0.1 microfarad capacitors. These are these little guys here. If you have very good eyes, you can hold them and look and it should say 104. That's just code 4.1 microfarad. They're both the same and the polarization doesn't matter, so feel free to put them in however you'd like. They go here, right next to the SparkFun text, and here, next to the word watch. Hold them in place and bend the leads out just a little bit, and I'm just going to solder them in place. And snip off the excess leads. Next up is the crystal. That's this little guy right here. This guy's a little bit tricky because he stands up so tall, and remember, we're trying to get this in a flush package into a watch. So what we have to do is put him into place here, before you stick them down all the way, bend them over so he sits flush with the board. Feel free to solder him in as well. Next up, we're going to do the two larger components, starting with the Atmega 328 microcontroller. That's this little guy right here. As you can see on the microcontroller here, there's a little notch on one end, and that just indicates the orientation. And you need to match up that notch with the notch on the circuit board. We've actually cut one of the leads of this dip package, so it should only fit in one direction. When it does get into place, it should sit flush with the board. Now get your soldering skills ready because this guy's got a lot of pins. Now the next component is the display itself that will be showing the numbers. Now be very careful to line up the dot pattern on the display itself with the dot pattern you see in the instructions and on the silk screen of the board itself. When he's seated, you can turn him over very carefully, solder him into place just like you did the last chip. And just like we did with the resistor and capacitors and the crystal, we're going to have to snip all these leads off so it sits flush in the housing. The next component we're going to be soldering on is the switch. Now this is the physical on-off switch that you'll be pressing to see what time it is. This little guy here. Now we're going to be mounting him in the bottom right hand side of the board, and we want the little plastic guy facing out, so you can actually activate the switch with the rocker. Now we're just going to push him into place here. Let's go ahead and solder him in. The last piece we're going to be adding to the board is the battery holder. Now this is the only surface mount part of the kit, and it could be a little tricky to add, but don't worry, we'll walk you through it. So rather than having it be flush with the circuit board, we want to raise it up a little bit. So to do that, we're just going to add a little dab of solder to the middle of it. We're going to spread it around so it covers 
the better part of the pad. We're going to first start by putting a dab of solder on the top right pad here on the board. Now make sure you get the alignment of the battery holder correct. It's very vital. If you have it in backwards, you're not going to be able to stick the battery in and you're not going to be able to have it work as a watch. So I'm just going to place the battery holder, see if I can hold the soldering iron on top of the pad. Then you look, it will be held in place. As you apply heat from the soldering iron to the battery holder, it can get very, very hot. So you might want to use some tweezers or maybe a little pair of pliers or anything you have laying around that you can actually manipulate the battery holder with to get it to seat in place correctly. Now you can see the battery is held in place just by that one tab, but there are four tabs. So what I'm going to do is solder down this side in place as well. Again, this is a little, can be a little bit tricky because it is surface mount components we're soldering to the board, but be patient, take your time, take a deep breath in between, and you'll get it no problem. Turn the board around and do the same thing on this side with this last pad. With any luck, that takes care of the soldering portion of this kit. I'm going to take the battery, and with the plus side up, I'm just going to insert it into the board. You can see it says blue, and that just lets me know that I have correctly assembled everything. Press the button, press and hold it again for three seconds, and it will actually start counting up. And feel free to set the time now, or you can wait till it's fully assembled. Now it's time for final assembly. We're going to be taking these laser cut pieces of acrylic and putting the watch into them and screwing everything together so it's held nice and snug. Step one is to remove the paper backing from these. You should be able to peel it back and reveal the clear piece of uh, acrylic underneath. The bottom layer is this little guy here with the two slits for the watch band and the four screw holes that will hold everything together. The next layer is this guy that we're just going to sit right on top and hold in place for now. Next we have the circuit board itself, the one you just assembled. And with any luck it should fit pretty snug right into there. The next piece is this funny looking guy and once he's in place, with any luck, the switch should fit right in here with the notch at the top. Now that all the layers are together, I'm going to put the screws in place just to kind of keep everything together. Now I don't want to screw them in too tight. If you screw it too tight you risk stripping out the acrylic, so all we have left to do now is add the watch band. So you want the watch band to go bottom to top and you want the smooth side facing up because that's what's going to ultimately be on your wrist. I'm just going to go ahead and thread it through here then thread it through the bottom as well. So this has been the Big Time Watch Kit. Hopefully you walk away having honed your soldering skills and looking extra stylish. Until next time, this is Dave with Sparkfun Electronics.